Welcome! This is our worship for the sixth Sunday after Epiphany. We are once again gathering in person and online. And in person this week, we have a baptism. And while we don't have it in this video, we know that the church as a whole celebrates with the newest member of our church family. We'll begin our worship today with a greeting. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and lead us, that we may bathe in the glory of your Son born among us and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in this good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ and inheritors of eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen. Let us pray. Living God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace, and then the renewal of our lives make known your glory through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
Our first reading for today is from Jeremiah 17. Thus says the Lord, Cursed are those who trust in mere mortals, and make mere flesh their strength, whose hearts turn away from the Lord. They shall be like a shrub in the desert, and they shall not see when relief comes. They shall live in the parched places of the wilderness, in an uninhabited salt land. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. The heart is devious above all else. It is perverse. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, test the mind and search the heart to give to all according to their ways, according to the fruit of their doings. Our second reading is Psalm 1. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in season, and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do, they prosper. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. The word of the Lord. When I was little, people asked me what I wanted to be when I grew up, and I knew exactly what my answer was. And no, it wasn't wanting to be a pastor. I wanted to be a Broncos cheerleader. But it turns out you need a full-time job to go along with that. After all, football only happens part of the year. Uh, so I decided to be a Broncos cheerleader and a professional cake decorator. So far, I have managed to be a lifelong Broncos fan and make my own wedding cake. That's about as far as I've made it in this goal. What do you want to be when you grow up? Who do you admire? Who do you want to be like? Today's psalm is Psalm 1. It's the very first of the book, and it talks all about who we want to be. One of the interesting things about the Bible is that it's been translated into a lot of different languages, and English, of course, is one of them, since it was originally written in Hebrew and Greek. There are choices to be made when translating all the time, right? There often is not a one-for-one -one direct translation word. The psalm, this psalm is no exception to translation choices. It starts off with happy, the word, right, happy are those. But it turns out that it could really mean something more like enviable. The ways of the righteous are envied by others. They are admired. They're what people want to be. So living in the law of the Lord, the Torah, the scripture, the whole of the gospel message, that's envied. Dwelling in it and not the ways of the world. This is what this psalm talks about. It tells us this is what you want to be like, like a tree planted by water. Growing up in Colorado, the idea of needing to be near water is a familiar one to me. Water has to be brought to the planting because there isn't much around, right? It's a semi-arid desert. When driving through the plains, you know that there's a stream off in the distance because there's a line of trees there. This psalm was written in a dry land a very similar climate to Colorado, actually, a desert area. It's saying that in a world that's barren, being planted by water is the only way to be. It's the same with the word of God. In a world that doesn't have it, this is the way to have life. This is how we survive. It's also what our text from Jeremiah is talking about. The world without God's word, the world without deep roots sunk into the water, that's the way of the cursed that Jeremiah talks about. 
The way of the wicked is to do it yourself, to be lone and solitary, put yourself in the place of God. This is what it means to sin. To turn in on yourself and stop caring about God's word, stop caring for the needs of the neighbor. If you do this, you are not being fed by the stream. You're not fed by the Torah. You will dry up and blow away like chaff, like all that is temporary and fleeting. But the ways of the righteous is a relationship. It's leaning into the word of God. It's caring about the neighbor. It's living lives that prosper. The word prosper, that whole line, in all that they do, they prosper. It's a really interesting line, right? Sadly, it's not a wealth guarantee. It isn't a guarantee that things will be perfect if you believe in God. It isn't a promise that nothing bad will happen to you and you'll succeed in everything you do. Which makes us wonder, what does prospering in the Lord look like? We didn't hear our gospel text for today in uh, our video, but uh, it's the Sermon on the Plain the blessings and the woes. And at first it does seem worrisome that we are to not acquire wealth or have full bellies or maybe we need to be miserable to be blessed. Woe are those who, right? Maybe we should strive for the low end of the food chain so Jesus will give us more. But that's not how it works. This is not a pronouncement on the haves and the have-nots. This is a declaration on living deeply rooted, that when you're blessed, you're content and satisfied and at peace. Prospering, like the psalm says, or being blessed, like Jesus says, producing the fruit that you are meant to. We hear in the psalm that these trees yield fruit in their season. It's about using your gifts in the best way possible, participating in the community of believers and all for the sake of the world. Prospering means making it through all the hard stuff because you're nourished by God. Both Jeremiah and Jesus talk about blessings and curses. These aren't the same as doing things so that God will then bless you. You aren't cursed because God hates you. They're just talking about the way we live, what we're putting our trust in. We may think that the way of mortals will save us, or that the things that look like blessings, money and power, will protect us from hard times. But no, we are told. Trusting in these things is like being planted in a desert far away from water. When the Psalm says that they meditate on the word day and night, it doesn't just mean showing up to worship or reading your Bible more or all the time, though those things are good to do. Having faith disciplines like daily devotions or a prayer journal or regular Bible study are all good ways to engage your faith. But really that line means truly living out the gospel. It is a way of saying this is a way of life. It's a commitment. If you plant your roots, you're declaring that this is the place you will be. It is here where you will live your life. This is the same as the promises made in baptism, right? To live a full Christian life, to dwell with God in all the ways that God shows up, in worship, in scripture, in sacraments, in justice and peace for all the world. There's another Bible passage that I think really helps us understand this concept. It's James chapter 2 verses 14 through 17. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked or lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. Faith without works is dead. I used to hear these words and worry that I had to work for my salvation, that the only way to prove to God that I had enough faith 
was to do works. And all of that sounded pretty un-Lutheran. But our salvation is not dependent on this. This peace is taken care of. And the life-giving waters of baptism, the water that we turn to again and again and remember that we are nourished by grace, that we are a new creation, that we are planted and our roots can drink deep of this water. But a tree that's separated from water doesn't do well. A branch cut off from the vine withers. A faith that isn't lived out is no faith at all. Living in response to our salvation takes many forms. The Psalms are often praise in response to what God has already done. Reminders of all the gracious actions of God that allow us to live in freedom from worry. When you are planted near a stream, you don't have to worry about finding water. Listen again to the beautiful description from Jeremiah. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. Here, too, the psalmist is expressing what comes after salvation. When you are rooted in the word, you don't have to worry about where your salvation comes from. Our blessings are not from the things we acquire or the things the world says are good. Our blessings come from being deeply rooted in community, in grace, in the love of God. You are the righteous. You are the ones chosen by God. Sink your roots deep into that knowledge and know that you are blessed. Amen. As the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. You alone are my strength, my shield. And you are my brother, even though you are.
invite you to join me in a brief time of prayers of intercession followed by the Lord's Prayer. If you feel so moved, the response to each petition will be, hear our prayer. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. Blessed are those whose trust is in you. Strengthen the faith of those who profess your name and bring reassurance to those who doubt or fear. Through your church, speak continued blessings into the world. God of grace, hear our prayer. Those who trust in you are like trees planted by streams of water. Bless fruit trees with abundant harvest. Protect rainforests from destruction. Restore land that is eroded after deforestation. Resurrect woodlands after forest fires. God of grace, hear our prayer. Search the hearts of those who govern, that they lead with humility. Inspire leaders to collaborate on policies that protect people and the planet. Sustain truth tellers and social movements that challenge society to become more honest and just. God of grace, hear our prayer. Send your blessings of mercy upon those who long for consolation. Tend to those struggling with poverty, unemployment, or uncertainty. Provide for all who are hungry. Console those who face persecution. Grant peace to all who suffer especially those who recently had medical emergencies, those recovering from surgeries, and all those we name in our hearts now. God of grace, hear our prayer. Christ is raised from the dead, and so we cling to the hope of resurrection. We praise you for the lives of the saints who lived and died in the hope of eternal life with you. God of grace, hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all our prayers to you in confidence and faith, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive this blessing as you go out into the world, taking the gospel message with you. God, who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you, and who calls you by name, Bless your going out and your coming in, today and forever. Amen. Go with Christ into a weary world. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.